All right, guys, I'm gonna do a video on timing belt on a 99 Mitsubishi Montero winter package, so the Gen 2.5. And the first thing I'm gonna do is take the whole intake off and then uh, take the radiator out and drain the fluid. And I'll get back to you guys once I finish that. Okay, the radiator's out and I took the fan clutch out and the intake out. So now that gives you a lot more room and I'm gonna start by turning the crank and lining up all the timing marks. Um, I suspect that this thing's out of time because this belt is super, super loose. And I think the tensioner went out, so I'm gonna actually get the 22 millimeter down here and line up the timing marks and see if it's even in time. Okay, I just spun it over and it appears to be in time. I'll get closer for you. But there's the timing mark on that. And that's the timing mark. It's off a tiny bit, which is not a big deal. But up here, that lined up. And then that lined up. So I don't think it jumped timing, but I'm going to keep digging into it I think we're good all right so I got it all lined up now I'm gonna start taking this whole front plate off I'm gonna start by taking all the belts off so to take the power steering belt off you're gonna loosen this tensioner and then to get the AC belt off you're gonna loosen this tensioner right here and then to get the main serpentine belt you're gonna loosen this tensioner down there and then I like to take the alternator out and then I like to also move the AC to the side. So I'll take this off first and then I'll show you guys how to take the AC out. It's not too bad. All right, so I got the power string pump off and the power string belt and the AC belt. So to get the power steering thing off, you just take this 14 off, this 14 off, and then there's two 14s right there. And then there's a little cover that goes above the belt to hold it on. And uh, I just put the bolts back in there. And then you're also going to want to take this bracket off right here. There is a bolt right there. And one right there. You're also going to want to take this uh, oil tube off. And to get the AC off, hard to see, but I'll try to get in there. There's a bolt right there. And there's a bolt on this side. So there's, there's a total of four bolts that hold the pump to the AC bracket. And the four bolts are on the side right here. So there's one on the top, one right here, and then there's one down there and one down there. And then I'll show you guys how to take the alternator off. 14 right there. Bolt holding it in the back. Plug in the back. plug right down here and alternator will come out and I'll get to you guys once I get that done all right guys so I got the alternator out um, it's pretty easy you just get that one nut on the top and then the plug uh, you just squeeze it on the bottom and the whole thing comes out this thing's covered in oil so I'm guessing my front cam tools are gonna be leaking but I'm replacing those anyways and Next, I'm just gonna take the AC compressor out and I could take this whole front cover off and then also the oil thing. And I should have access to the timing belt. All right, so I just got the AC compressor out and I just got it sitting on the side here on the frame rail, but now let me show you how to get this, the bracket for it off. So here's the four bolts that are for the AC compressor. Um, so you're gonna take this bolt off. That there's nothing there. I'm not sure how good you guys can see, but way in the back, there's a bolt right there. And then way down at the bottom, there's one more bolt. And that takes the bracket off, so there's only a couple bolts for that. And then that creates some space. And then you could take the front plate off. 
Okay, I got the front plate off. And now you can see all the timing belt and everything. Um, but let me show you the thing. So here's the AC compressor and here's what I'm talking about. So there's the four bolts that hold the compressor and then there's a bolt here in the back, a bolt on the bottom, and then there's a bolt behind the compressor. And then there's the front bracket. All you just do is take all these 14s off and it'll come right off. So now I'm probably just gonna loosen the crank bolt and then pop this off and then pop this cover off. And then from there, just loosen the tensioner and take the belt off and start taking the water pump off. But it's pretty straightforward. All right, so I got the pipe off that connects to this pipe that goes to the back and connects to the water pump. So you'll need to get a new O-ring for right there. This thing's super rusted, so I might just get a new pipe. But I'm probably gonna take the crank bolt out next and then the belt and I could start doing all the seals and stuff but um to get the pipe off you just take four super long bolts that connect here and that connects to the thermostat which is right there and there's that right there so once you get that done you can start taking the belt off all right I just got the crank bolt out it had the old style which is defective and can snap thank god it came out we just used a uh, air impact gun since i took out the radiator there was plenty of room um now i'm just gonna take this lower cover off and i'm gonna take the uh crank sensor off and move it because when i take the water pump out it's gonna spill water everywhere and i don't want to destroy the sensor so I'm gonna do that and then I'll take the belt off and I'll get back to you guys after that. All right, so I got everything off in the front. Um, before you take the belt off, make sure to loosen the cam gears. I just used the impact and loosen them real quick while the belt was on and then you're gonna wanna pop the belt off. All I did was take the hydraulic tensioner off and you could slide the belt off. And then I also took this off down here now I'm going to take this tensioner off, this pulley off, and then the water pump, and then the cam gear so I could do the seals. And then also got to replace the O-ring for the water pump in the back. And here's what my, fr my uh, crank sensor looks like. This thing is broken and destroyed, so I just ordered a new one. Um, I should, probably should have bought one before I did this, but the car is running, so worst case scenario, I'll just have the new one. I'll keep this one as a spare, but um, that kind of sucks. Maybe that's why this car wasn't running so good, but also something you can notice is, well, not anymore, but when you had the little crank sprocket down here, the, time, the little timing mark for that is, here, let me try to get down there. So here's this. Let me get a towel and wipe it, but. You see that little raised edge right there? That'll line up with the sprocket. So that's the timing mark right there. Probably a good idea to clean it and mark it or something. But um, I'm gonna also replace this crank seal down here. And also for the water pump, one of the bolts that holds the big accessory bracket on it holds the water pump on, so that's why there's a hole right there. Um, I'll get back to you guys once I get the water pump off and do all that stuff. Okay, so everything's off. Now I just need to replace the cam seals and this crank seal down here and the water pump and the gasket and then I had to buy a new crank sensor because this one broke so I'm waiting for that to come but I could at least get the water pump and the seals on for now and then once that part comes in I'll continue with the belt 
All right, so the new timing belt's on. Everything's lined up. There's the mark right there for the crank. I had to get a new crank sensor because when I was taking the old one off, it broke. The pulley tensioner set. Right now I'm just replacing these two coolant lines. Mine were in pretty bad shape. Um, it's pretty, they're pretty cheap and uh, something that could make you lose coolant, so might as well replace it. But when you're messing with the cam gears, be careful because I accidentally bumped this one with my hand and it like springed to the left, so I had to move it back to the right. And other than that, I just got to put all the covers back on and then make sure I put the cam sensor on up here and get these coolant lines on and then I can start wrapping it up. Okay, everything's lined up. Now I'm just putting the timing covers on. And I have the bolt, the old bolt, and I have a new bolt, but I have to take it off with the impact gun later. And pretty much just get these covers on, get the big accessory bracket on, get the AC bracket on, and then get the whole upper water housing on and go from there. Okay, so I'm reassembling everything and I got the front plate on. Um, crank pulleys on with the new updated bolt which I didn't show you guys, but it's a lot shorter than the old one. Getting the AC bracket on, and I forgot one of the O-rings, so I'll do that later, but I'm gonna get this on first. Okay, so next day, um, got the whole front accessory bracket on, power steering pumps on, new O-ring on this water pipe, now I'm just gonna, oh yeah, new rubber lines for this. Now I'm just gonna put this on. And I should be done very soon. Okay, so I just got this uh, thermostat and upper water housing off, um, or on, I meant. So you just gotta make sure you get that O-ring in, it slips in and then connect it right there. So I'll have to tighten it, but you get the idea. Next, I'm going to put in this thermostat. And there's actually a certain way you have to install the thermostat. So I'll show you how, in, how you install the thermostat in one second. Okay, so I got pretty much everything on the top on. I'm going to put the thermostat in. And I wanted to show you guys how you're supposed to put it in. So in the manual, it says here, I got a new ASIN, which is OEM thermostat. There's the part number. And this is how you're gonna wanna install it. So it says, install the thermostat so the jiggle valve is facing straight up. So that's the jiggle valve. And it wants to be facing straight up, so just like that. And bam, that's the thermostat. And let me get everything else on and I'll get back to you guys. Okay, so I just got all the belts on and now I'm putting the coolant hoses on. Um, but I'm gonna show you how you wrap the hose, uh, the, not the hoses, the belts. So the power steering belt, all you're gonna do is go down, around that, and around this, pretty easy. For the AC belt, same thing, you just go all the way around. The only one that's a little tricky is a serpentine belt, so it's hard to see, but here it is. It goes around that, around the alternator, under and over, and then down. All right, so everything's pretty much in. I just gotta check the belts if they're tightened correctly. Um, this air box is in. Everything else is plugged in. The new crank sensor is plugged in and routed correctly. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm just gonna tie in the belts. Then I'm gonna put the fan in, the shroud, 